see I, I hesitated, now I can't reach it because it's resisting a little. Now he relaxes. He's actually just very big. <laughs> <laughs> I can't connect him. Okay, so if you can't connect your hands, then you gotta use a little speed instead of control. I'm like, oh crap, alright, I'm gonna move before he gets half guard. So he starts to go for his half guard. I have time to leave. That can happen sometimes. What's interesting about half guard is I presented it first as a, uh, from the perspective of a top passer, a way to pin your opponent uh, and get past them for your knee line and get past their guard. Um, so that's what's interesting about half guard. It's both really good for the top person to get to a pin there and pass, but it's also the best sweeping guard there is. It's better than closed guard. Um, it's better than a lot of open guard uh, systems. Half guard is one of the fastest ways to sweep an opponent. If you just watch like Damian Maya in the UFC, he has he has solid wrestling, but he has like jujitsu wrestling, which is just not at the same level as like American collegiate wrestling. But he uses half guard to kind of when his shot fails, uh, he often is able to use half guard to he gets in with that shot and he sprawls, and instead of just like staying in turtle, he uses half guard in a recovery position. And he ends up still getting to a lot of sweeps and back takes. So um, a big reason why half guard is, is good for sweeps is because you're already halfway to flanking your opponent. You're making your way around your opponent. Okay. Because one of your legs is outside. If both legs were inside, okay, it's a very long route to get behind them. So, so but we're not gonna do exactly that. We're working the electric chair system. Okay, so when we're playing the electric chair and we want to go from bottom to top or maybe even get a submission, we want to break it down into three micro battles. Okay, so the first micro battle we need is that, that we need to win is the lockdown micro battle. Okay, so that can be from Z needing to pummel the inside foot position and achieve this inside figure four here lockdown. Okay? Or if he's standing up, I need to figure out how to get his knee on the ground okay, to get to a lockdown. Or he's hiding it and I need to figure out how to maybe off balance and get to a lockdown. Micro battle number two is the underhook. Okay, so I need to be able to, once I've gotten locked, I need to be able to get, dominate this underhook here, this routine. Uh, so that starts with, first of all, not allowing him to get his underhook, not having daylight there and having him pin me when he goes into his passive sequence. But it also starts with me initiating, maybe he's playing possum, he's staying back a little bit, and I have to use some tactics to make him retreat that arm. And I can slingshot my way in. And then the third micro battle is the whip. Okay, so like I said, I'm trying to flank my opponent, Jeremy, from half guard. There's two kind of routes to flanking him. One is the traditional kind of dog fight, but the other way is getting to the electric chair position, close your arms. Okay, this is also a version of flanking him. Okay, so if I, as soon as I pass his leg over my head, Oh, I'm kind of on his back right now. Okay, so those are the three micro battles. Lockdown, underhook, and the whip to get around to one side or the other. Let's start all the way from Zelda. I have my Z starting with frames. I'm controlling distance. I don't just wildly go for clinches. Controlling distance. Elbows load him up, get my lockdown. Inside position. Then it's whip north, and then north, and then what is, if this is north, this is west. Cool. Thanks. And that is north technically, isn't it? I'm turned around right now. Okay. North. West. Okay. The whip west is kind of hard here. You use the underhook to kind of climb yourself that way. I'm climbing this. He's basing off this leg. And then I go. And then knees and chest again. With left. East. 
Thumb boast, straight arm, shuck. Nice grip. Boom. Okay, so I have my lock down here, and he started, I have inside position, but he's starting to kind of like clinch and, and establish wedges here. Okay, so it's, I go from extending shoelaces on shoelaces to knees to chest. My shoelaces slide up more toward his knee. And then I can whip him either way. I can go left or right. I can go straight to my, I can first stop at my perfect electric double underhooks or or before those electric double underhooks. I can go straight to the electric chair side. The only problem with this is I have to, I have to, I have to go capture the leg after the fact, which leaves my neck open a little bit. So if I go for this leg and hug my neck here, okay, I might get stuck. So that's the reason why you might want to whip to, to the inside first. It's clenching up, north, and first go. This way, climb the underhook, and I'm blocking this bicep so he can't come back to hug my head, and I dive through this leg here. And then we go back to our whip. Knees to chest, transfer, bottom armpit, shuck, top armpit, elbow walk to a T, foot pin, hand connection. Okay, if he doesn't tap there, build up. Our hand, dive on head and arm. See, I, I hesitated. Now I can't reach it because he's resisting a little. Now he relaxes. He's actually just very big. <laughs> <laughs> I can't connect him. Okay, so if you can't connect your hands, then you gotta use a little speed instead of control. I'm like, oh crap, all right, I'm gonna move before he gets half guard. So he starts to go for his half guard. I have time to leave. That can happen sometimes. right here okay one thing I want to do is get back to inside hand position sometimes you'll do the Zelda and they get pinned with head and arm just to get the lock down sometimes people sacrifice all this just for this yeah I'd like to I'd like to win both I'd like to still have my underbrush so we're here in Z I grab his elbows through, but my hands and elbows go inside. Okay, so once I'm here, um, and we're thinking electric chair, I'm flat on my back right now. Usually the first thing we think is, is he's putting chest pressure on me, is I'm trying to extend to get him lower on me, and I'm seeing if I can whip him to the side. Okay, but oftentimes I get stuck here. I'm trying to whip him, but he feels heavy. Really the reason why we're getting stuck is let's rotate. The reason we usually get stuck, and I'll take away, is because he has wedges upstairs. So even though I haven't given up my underhook, his cross face right here is blocking my movement in that direction. Okay, so it's just very difficult, and he's resisting. So actually, the first thing I want to do is not take him to the left. I want to take him north. I take him over my head. So what that means is instead of extending the lockdown, trying to get him lower on me, I'm trying to get him higher on me. So I'm going to go knees to chest. Like so. I'm going to pinch my knees. Okay, and now the whip is a lot easier. When I point my knees this way, he just tends to go in that direction. And on his upper armpit here. So it's bottom armpit while his leg is on my thigh, while his uh, thigh is on my bicep. Okay. And then I shuck it onto my shoulder. I go to the top arm from here. Build up on my elbow, get to a figure T. Okay, I want to get our spines perpendicular here. And this is what allows that. And then hand connection, the S grip. I'm going to pin his foot to the mat and rotate my right shoulder to the mat. Now, sometimes they're flexible, sometimes they just concede bottom position, and when they flop on their back, flop on your back, it's harder to finish this lockdown. So your plan B that you have to accept oftentimes is taking the sweep. Elbow, hand, and then dive on that head and arm with the leg. Just try to connect the S group right here. And this 
the point of this head, arm, and leg is so that he can't get his own half guard. I can freely pass by untying the knot. And then I just watch the reverse triangle here as I extract my arm.